Hey everyone, in this video we'll talk about the t-test, also known as the student t-test, and we'll see where it's useful, how it works, and the different types of t-tests. So, let's get right into it. A t-test is a statistical test used to determine if there is a significant difference between the means of two groups. It is commonly used when dealing with small sample sizes and the data follows a normal distribution or approximately normal. For example, let's imagine that we have two groups of students and we want to know if there is a significant difference in their scores. One group received extra tutoring and these are their scores, while the other didn't and obtain these scores. So we have the following null hypothesis, which says there is no significant difference between the average test scores of the two groups. To test this, we use an independent t-test or two-sample t-test, which is ideal for comparing the means of two independent groups. In our case, the group which received extra tutoring and the group which didn't receive extra tutoring. And to do that, we use the following formula. Here, x1 and x2 are the means of the two groups. S1 squared and S2 squared are their variances and N1 and N2 are the sample sizes. Basically, what this formula calculates is the difference between the group means in the numerator to see if there is a significant difference between the two and the pool standard error in the denominator which comes from the variability of both groups. Now, what we obtain after this calculation is called a t-value, and if it's greater than a predefined value called a critical value, then we reject the null hypothesis, which in our case would say that indeed the extra tutoring made a significant difference in the student's test scores. So, let's run the numbers, and we get the following t-value. And to get a critical value to which we have to compare to, as dumb as it may sound, we have to extract it from this table, called a student t-table. The critical value depends on two factors. The degrees of freedom, which is equal to the number of samples in the first group, plus the number of samples in the second group minus 2, and the significance level, which tells us that if we run these tests a hundred times, for an alpha equals to 0.05, for instance, 95 out of a hundred times we would get a t-value higher than this one here in the table and 5 out of 100 times we'd get a t-value lesser than this one here. So, to recap, the t-test is used to determine if there is a significant difference between the means of two normal distributions. We use the following formula to calculate the t-value, and if this value is greater than the critical value which we extract from this table, then we reject the null hypothesis. Pretty simple, right? No, I would like to dig a little bit deeper into this formula so we can get a better feeling and understanding about how it affects the end result of our statistics. So, first of all, we have in the numerator the difference between the means of the two distributions. And if you were to increase it, then we'd get a higher t-value, so a higher chance of rejecting the null hypothesis. This change is pretty intuitive if you think about it. The further away the two means are, the higher the chance of a significant difference between the two. Similarly, we have the sigmas in the denominator, which control the spread of the two distributions. We can pretty much see that if we decrease them, the two distributions became narrower, increasing the t-value and the chance of rejecting the null hypothesis. And, if we increase them, the two distributions widen, decreasing the t-value, and the chance of rejecting the null hypothesis. Finally, we have the number of samples n1 and n2, and here as well we can see that they directly affect the t-value, which again makes perfect sense since the more samples we have, the more confident we should be in our statistics. Now, let's move on and let's see what would happen in a different scenario where instead of looking at the scores of the two different groups of students, we look at the same group of students before and after extra tutoring. This is where we would use a pair t-test, also known as a dependent t-test, which is designed for situations where the same subjects are measured twice, once before and once after intervention allowing us to determine if there is a significant change in their performance. In this case, instead of comparing two independent groups, we compare two sets of scores that are related or paired. The formula for the paired t-test looks a bit different from the independent t-test. 
Here, we are interested in the difference between the paired observations rather than comparing the means of the two separate groups. So the t-test formula becomes something like this. Here, d is the mean of the differences between the paired observations, as d is the standard deviation of those differences, and n is the number of pairs, or in our case, the number of students. This formula measures whether the mean difference, d, is significantly different from zero. The logic is similar to the independent t-test, and if the calculated t value exceeds the critical value from the t table, we can reject the null hypothesis and say that the extra tutoring had a significant effect on the student's test scores. Just like before, the critical value depends on the degrees of freedom, but in this case, the degrees of freedom are simply equal to the number of pairs minus 1, or n minus 1. Let's visualize how this works. Imagine the test scores of the same students before and after tutoring. If you calculate the difference for each student, and most of the difference show improvement, this will likely result in a larger mean difference d, and thus a larger t value, making it more likely to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that tutoring had a significant effect. On the other hand, if the mean difference is small, it leads to a lower t value, which means we are more likely to fail to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that tutoring didn't have a significant effect. Also similar to the independent t-test, the t-value is negatively correlated with the standard deviation of the difference and positively correlated with the number of samples. So, the paired t-test is a powerful tool when we have a clear before and after scenario with the same subjects. But what if we don't have two groups or repeated measurements? What if we only have one group of students and we want to compare the test scores to a known average, such as a national benchmark score? This is where the one sample t-test comes into play, which is used to compare the mean of a single group to a known value or population mean. The formula is slightly different again, and it looks something like this. x is the sample mean, mu is the known population mean, and s is the sample standard deviation, and n is the sample size. This test is useful when, for example, you want to check if your student's average score significantly differs from the national average or from a target score. As with the other t-tests, if the calculated t-value exceeds the critical value, we reject the null hypothesis, meaning that the student's performance is significantly different from the known average. And, as it was the case with the other two t-tests, the mean and the number of samples positively correlate with the t-value, and when these values are increased, the chance of rejecting the null hypothesis also increases, and vice versa, and the standard deviation is negatively correlated with the t-value. So when the standard deviation increases, the chance of decreasing the null hypothesis decreases, and vice versa. So, to recap this explanation, the independent t-test is used to compare the means of two different groups. The pair t-test compares the means of the same group measured twice, and the one sample t-test compares the mean of a single group to a known value or benchmark. And all of these tests follow a similar logic, comparing a t-value calculated from your data to a critical value to decide whether or not to reject the null hypothesis. I hope this gave you a solid understanding of the t-test and its various types. It's a fundamental tool in statistical analysis, especially in experiments and small sample research, and mastering it can help you interpret your data effectively. Thanks for watching, and if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more content on statistics and machine learning. See you in the next video, bye bye!